Okay, so this question talks about um, data put into a group table. So this is saying basically that on six days the temperatures were between 10 and 15 degrees and this is four days between 15 and 20 and so forth. So we're going to have to be able to work with this data and interpret it uh, in that way. So the first thing says uh, here, write down the modal class. Well, modal is just about most, so the most often, the highest frequency. So when we look down the frequency column here, because don't forget the number of days is just telling us how many days, so we'd have to consider that as the frequency. And we can see that the most days, uh, 44, uh, the temperature was between 25 and 30. So on here, it talks about class interval, so make sure that you actually write down the full interval as given in the table. So 25 T less than 30. So the temperature was greater than or equal to 25, um, but less than 30 on most days. Because 44 days out of the table were between those temperatures. Um, then the next question says work out an estimate for the mean. So in a way we should really have a formula in our mind for the mean average of uh, group data. And the formula is the sum of the midpoints times the frequencies divided by the sum of the frequencies. Um, basically that's come from the idea that you do the sum of XFs divided by the sum of Fs. Uh, this symbol just means a uh, fancy way of saying the sum of the total of. Um, X is always your data points times the frequencies. Um, the top part of this will give you the total um, of all the numbers in your system and obviously the bottom part gives you the total numbers, uh, the n total number of uh, numbers that gave you the total um, and basically that's the mean because you're spreading it out per item um, but when you've got group data we don't actually know the exact temperatures we just know the intervals that they were in so we use the midpoint so the idea is that uh, you would add on an extra column for the midpoint values and then you would show the midpoint times the frequency calculations to be able to work out what all the temperatures added up for for all these days we do need to know how many days there are altogether because the formula requires the total number of frequencies to know uh, how many days we're dealing with for this data. So we've got 10, um, 30, 34, 34, 74, 78, 88, 92. So there's 92 days of data in this table. So we've got to work out the midpoints. Well, the way of doing that is you add the two numbers up and then halve it at the end of each interval. Um, some of these are so fairly logical. You're going halfway with fives, so 12 and a half, 17 and a half, 22 and a half, 27 and a half, 32 and a half, and 37 and a half. So those are all the uh, the middle values between the intervals. Um, and then we have to do the midpoint times the frequencies. So we're going to be doing 12.5 times 6. Now what that's doing, remember, is it's estimating for those 6 days what was the total temperature within those 6 days. Um, so 6, 12.5, um, 72 plus 3, 75. Um, and then we're doing 17.5 times 4. Uh, well, 4, 17 is 68, so that must be 70. And then we're doing 22.5 times uh, 24. Well, this would be on a calculator paper, so well, we could work it out. Let's save a bit of time. 22.5 times 24, so 540. And then we've got 27.5 times 44, so 1,210. And then we've got 32.5 times 10, so 325. And then we've got 37.5 times 4. So if we double 37.5, so 75. And then double that again, so 150. And then we need the total for that, because this will be the sum of all the MFs, the sum of the midpoint times frequencies, the total temperatures for all the days. So we've got 75 plus 70 plus 540, plus 1,210, plus 325, plus 150, so 2,370. So the formula says that uh, for getting the mean, we need to know the total of all the temperatures, which was 2,370 degrees, and we have to divide that by the number of days to get the average temperature per day, because uh, the mean is the temperature per day. 
So we're going to do 2,370 divided by 92. So we get an answer of 25.76 degrees C. Um, three significant figures is a good accuracy to use. So that's what we will not let you choose, particularly as the question said, do three significant figures. To check, remember always when you've uh, done some calculations, check your answer actually works. Um, so 25.8, uh, when we look at the number of days, we can see that most of the days were in this area here. So we'd expect the temperature to be around 20 to 30, somewhere in that region, because uh, most of the days were happening in this area. And we can see that that makes sense. If we'd have got an answer of, say, 15 degrees or something, then we'd probably say that can't be right, because that would suggest it's down the bottom here, whereas most of the days were up in the 20s and so forth. So again, always ask yourself, does your answer make sense? Is it reasonable to have that? OK, so then we're going to go on and we're going to plot a cumulative frequency graph. And basically, when we plot a cumulative frequency graph, we've got to look at the data, and we've been given group data again, and therefore we're going to need some cumulative frequencies. So, if we look at the graph itself that we're having to use, then we can see here that we've got to go to a total of 100, uh, which is sensible because the number of days was 92. So, we're going to need uh, cumulative frequencies. So I'm just going to add that into here. And we're going to work out the cumulative frequency. So the first uh, interval had a frequency of 6. Cumulative means add up as you go along. So we're going to add on the 4 to make 10 so far. So up to 20 degrees, there are 10 days. Then we're going to add on the 24. Then we're going to add on the 44. Then we're going to add on the 10, whoops, 34 plus 44 is 78, yep, so not uh, 88. And then 78 plus that is 88, and then 88 plus 4 is 92. So those are our cumulative frequencies to use. Now when you're plotting a cumulative frequency curve, you've got to remember that you always plot the end of the intervals. So it's really important that you remember to plot the end of the intervals. Um, so that's our data. Um, so we'll get the graph and we'll start plotting that data. So we can see that the first set of data we've got to plot is 15 and 6. So we come across the 15 and up to 6. Now with all graphs we work out the scale. So we can see that on the vertical scale here, the cumulative frequency scale, um, each little square is worth 2. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So 15, 2, 4, 6, so 15 and 6 was there. Now we should always have a starting point for our cumulative frequency graphs, and that comes from looking at the lowest possible value in the intervals that you were given. So the lowest possible value here was 10, so that means at 10, anything below that, there was zero days. So that will be our starting point for our cumulative frequency graph. We've then got the next interval, which is 20, going to 10, so 20, and then up to 10. And then we've got 25 up to 34. And then we've got 30 up to 78. So 30 up to 78. And then we've got 35 up to 88. And then we've got 40 up to 92. Okay, so those are the values plotted. So what we've got to remember then is that a cumulative frequency curve always uh, gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and classically it's like an elongated S, an O give it's called. And so we've got to remember the shape of a cumulative frequency graph. We're always getting bigger and bigger and bigger, because that gives us a hint if we've done something wrong in our calculations. Um, so and then it's always a smooth curve. So we kind of go through the points with our pen and we make sure that we draw a smooth curve by not taking our pen off the page until we get to the end and we try our best to go through every cross. Okay, so that's our cumulative frequency curve uh, drawn and now we've got to uh, see what the question uh, they want to do. So they want to find the estimate for the median and the interquartile range. So the median, we want to estimate uh, what happened on the, uh, the middle day so we got to realise that the total cumulative frequency was 92. So in other words, there are 92 days in here. Now, because it's an estimate, 
Um, we don't have to go for the formula that says add 1 to 92 and halve it um, to get the exact middle. It's an estimate, so we can just simply halve the cumulative frequency. So half of 92 is 46. So we find 46, and that's going to be the middle day that we'll use as an estimate of the median. And we use our ruler, come across to our curve, and come down, and then we read off. Uh, the scale going along the bottom here is 1 for every square, little square, so that's 26. So the estimate for the median, oops, so the median temperature we estimate as 26 degrees Celsius. Um, it then wants you to calculate the interquartile range. Well, we must remember the interquartile range has a formula. So the interquartile range uh, formula is the upper quartile value take away the lower quartile value. So in other words, the 75% position take away the 25% position. So we've got to find three quarters of the way in our data and a quarter of the way in our data. Well, we've already found halfway. So if we halve that again, we'll get a quarter way. So half of 46 is 23. So again, get our ruler, come across to our curve, and it's an estimate. So it's just slightly below 24. So I'm going to estimate it as 23.8. So 23.8 is the estimate for the lower quartile. And the position of the upper quartile, which is three quarters of the way along your data, so three quarters, well, we already know 23 was a quarter, plus the halfway, which is 46, so that gives me 69. So the upper quartile value we'll find at the 69th day. So we come across and we come down. And we can see we're slightly beyond there, so 25, 28, so about 28.2, so 28.2. Okay, so that's given us our values, and therefore we have to now calculate the actual interquartile range. So we're doing 28.2, take away 23.8, which is going to be 4.4, so 4.4 degrees C. So that's just a reminder of how you can plot a cumulative frequency curve. Always remember to plot the end of the intervals against the cumulative frequency. A smooth curve, always increasing. Um, find out your total cumulative frequency, half that uh, to get the position of the median. Uh, come across the graph and read off the answer for the median value. Um, half that again to get the quarter away, the lower quartile value. Again, come across the graph and then read off. Okay, so that's uh, examples of plotting and drawing the cumulative frequency graphs.